Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this podcast is focused on delivering practical tips and techniques that we can use in life to find inner peace and happiness. If you have any suggestions for topics, let me know through my social media, this site, or email. My contact information is found at my website, lifesjourneyblog.com. This episode is entitled, Hope and Freedom is Possible. I'll be talking about how we can find inner freedom through being hopeful. To begin, listen to this quote from the philosopher Viktor Frankl. He writes, Everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. I believe this is a very important quote, so let me read it again. Everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Last week, I celebrated the 4th of July, a day here in the United States when we recall our nation's freedom. Therefore, I began thinking about freedom and how freedom applies to my life, not just to a country. I began to question, do I have freedom? Am I truly free? Yes, we all have the potential to be free. So let's find out how. Have you ever spent time thinking of how minuscule our place is in the universe? I do. Try it now for a moment. In reference to the vastness of the millions of galaxies, the large size of our planet, focusing now onto your exact location, where do I really fit in? Am I just a cog in the gears of the universe, or do I have freedoms? A few weeks ago, I attended a symposium, which is focused on the current heroin epidemic here in the U.S. The conference room was filled with professionals from multiple agencies, each focused on finding solutions to stop people from dying from opiates. As an addiction counselor myself, I have worked with many individuals in their attempts to find freedom from their addictions. A person's circumstances, life choices, views on life, and their ability to obtain drugs all play a role in a person's addiction. No one whom I've ever met aspires to becoming an addict, yet there are too many people who have lost their freedoms to a drug. The ability for a person to move beyond one's addiction into the freedom of recovery is, in my opinion, based on one important understanding. And that is my ability to choose my attitude about myself and my life. Freedom is lost when we lose our perspective on life and allow others' perspectives about us to take root and grow in our thoughts. Not long ago, while I was out on a walk along the side of a road, I noticed a caterpillar also out on a walk along the same road. While watching the caterpillar, I couldn't help to think that his perspective on the world and where he fits in this vast universe is so much different from mine. Even though we both were only a mile or so from my house, would that caterpillar ever ever know that the world extends that far? I'm certain that he is oblivious to the actual size of our planet as his perspective, like our own, limits his world. 
For there was a time when us humans didn't even realize the vastness of our own planet. How alike are we to the caterpillar? As I further reflect on my caterpillar friend, I would like to think that his life's perspective is somewhat simpler than mine. More than likely, he stays focused on the present moment, hopeful and trusting that his instincts will properly guide him to safety and food. His sense of the present, without fear for the future, enables him to be free. When was the last time I was able to consciously focus on the present moment long enough to trust my instincts to guide me? I do believe there's a lot that I, and we, can learn from this caterpillar. Father Anthony de Mello, a Jesuit, tells a story which I feel is appropriate to these reflections that I've had on the caterpillar. This is what Father de Mello writes. A rich industrialist from the north was horrified to find a southern fisherman lying leisurely beside his boat. Why aren't you fishing? asked the industrialist. Because I have caught enough fish for the day, said the fisherman. Well, why don't you want to catch some more? What would I do with them? You could earn more money, was the reply. With that, you could fix a motor to your boat, go into deeper waters, and catch more fish. Then, you would make enough money to buy nylon nets. These would bring you more fish and more money. Soon you would have enough money to own two boats, maybe even a fleet of boats. Then you would be a rich man like me. But what would I do then? Then you could really enjoy life. What do you think I'm doing right now? You see, freedom comes from our perspective on life. As with the person struggling from addiction, when I allow my world view to be dictated by another, I'm no longer free. But like the story of the fisherman and my caterpillar friend, focused perspective on the present moment, combined with an understanding of where I fit in the scope of the universe, allows me to live in freedom. A freedom which comes from within not a freedom dependent from society, culture, or other people. One of my favorite H.G. Wells' book is entitled, When the Sleeper Wakes. And the premise of Wells' story is a variation on the Rip Van Winkle tale of a person falling asleep for a long period of time, eventually awakening to a world very different from the one he left when he fell asleep. In Wells' telling... This futuristic world, on the outside, appears to be a utopia. Yet, as the main character learns more about this new world and how it's organized, he realizes that the working class, through their mundane and tedious work, sustains this utopian society. In this world, there is no chance or even availability for upward advancement. Personally, I believe that true inner freedom fosters a sense of hope and imagination. Who among us does not have dreams for their life's journey? H.G. Wells, in this story, portrays a world devoid of personal hopes or dreams. And by removing a person's ability to advance, what is the point of either hopes or dreams? Dreams give us hope since we know that dreams have and do come true. My faith and my life experiences allow me to hope and to dream as my ability to hope comes from an inner freedom born of my perspective focused on the moment, infused with the understanding of my purpose in the universe. I personally don't hope and dream because it's something I'm supposed to do. Rather, I hope and dream because I can. Freedom is in knowing and accepting where I am in the grand scheme of things, and then choosing my attitude about it at any given moment. As I continued my walk, 
leaving my caterpillar friend to his journey, I wondered how I could find my inner freedom. Here are some of the questions that I asked myself. Number one, how can I change my perspective to realize that even though there is always more to the world out there, of which I'm not yet aware, the world that I do know is filled with potential, adventures, and new friends, if only I take the time to notice them. Number two, what can I do different so that I can experience a life full of hope and dreams toward which I can strive? And number three, what am I allowing to stand in the road blocking me from inner peace? I would like to hear from all of you and your experiences of this topic. Please leave a comment on this site or go to my website for all of my social media links. I hope you found this episode helpful, and if so, spread the word by sharing with and telling your friends about this podcast. Thank you, and have a mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.